Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to solve the exercises of chapter 3. So, in the first exercise, we model the number of car accidents by a non homogeneous Poisson process of intensity of periodic intensity given by 2 plus cosine 2 pi t per day. And we have to compute uh, the mean number of accidents during the first month the probability of at least two accidents during the second week, and the probability of at least three accidents during the fourth day. Okay, since it's a, it's a non-homogeneous Poisson process, we compute the integral from S to S plus T of the variable intensity lambda. Here it's easy to compute this integral because the expression is uh, a periodic function. So when we integrate that, we replace lambda by its value, we just get 2T plus 1 over 2 pi times the quantity that depends on s and t. But since pi, since, since sine is 2 pi periodic, then uh, when t is an integer, these two terms are equal. So the term cancel here. Okay. So when t is an integer, and this would be, will be our uh, case here, uh, m of s and t would just be 2t. Okay. So the first question, we have to compute the expected value of the number of accidents during the first month. If the, if the first month contains 30 days, then the number of accidents is just the random variable, n of 30 minus n of 0, or just n of 30 because n of 0 is 0. So, But n of 30 minus n of 0 follows a Poisson distribution of parameters n of 0 and 30. So according to what we said, this is just 16, 2 times 30. If the, and therefore, the, the, the average number of, the mean number of accidents is just 60 accidents. Okay, if the first month contains 31 days, then the mean value of accidents would, would be 62 accidents. And the second question, the number of accidents during the second week is n of 14 minus n of 17. So we have to compute the probability that n of 14 minus n of 17 is at least 2. If we denote this random variable by capital N, then by assumption, this random variable follows a Poisson distribution of parameter m of 7 and 7, which is, according to what we said, 2 times 7. So it's a Poisson, uh, it's a Poisson distribution of parameter 14. Okay, so here s equals 7, t equals 7. Now, we know how to compute this probability from second year. So the easiest way is to write the event n bigger of 2 as the complement of the event n less than 2. So, and since n takes only integer values, then the complement of the event n is at least, is at least 2 is n is either 0 or 1. So this is the easiest way to compute this probability. Of course, the second way is to just go back to the series, but you will get the same result if you like. Now, the probability of n equals 0 by definition is 14 to the 0 over 0 factorial times e to the minus 14, and probability of n equal 1 is 14 to the 1 over 1 factorial e minus 14. But e minus 14 is a very small number. Therefore, we get a high probability, actually, of 0 0.99998. The last question is similar. The number of accidents during the fourth day is n of 4 minus n of third, 3. So we have to compute that the probability that this random variable n is at least 3. And here, once again, so since it follows a Poisson process of uh, parameter 2, so 2 minus 1 because 4 minus 3. So here, if you like, t equal 1 and s equal 3. And we compute it, we write the event n bigger than or equal to 3 as the complement of the event uh, n less than 3. So n is either 0 or 1 or 2. And we replace uh, so k by its value. So it's 1 minus uh, 2 to the 0 over 0 factorial times the exponential minus 2 to the 1 over 1 factorial times the exponential minus 2 to the square square of 2 over 2 factorial e minus 2, <clears throat> and you just get 1 minus 5 e minus 2. <clears throat> now, and we get 0 0.3233. 
So this term now is not small, actually. Okay, so this concludes this easy exercise. Next exercise about compound Poisson processes. So we model the car accidents by a Poisson process of intensity four accidents per week. And the claims are independent and follow a uniform distribution between 50 US dollars and 10,000 US dollars. And they are also independent from the number of accidents. The first question we have to find the mathematical expectation and the standard deviation of the total amount that the company has to pay during a year. And the next question, we assume that there are two, there was 200 accidents uh, during the first year, and you have to compute the probability that the company will pay between uh, $900,000 and $1,100,000 in the first case, and more than $1,200,000. Uh, and for this, we have to use the central limit theorem. Okay, so if N of T denote the Poisson process of intensity 4 and Z sub I denote the claim of accident I and X of T denote the total amount of uh, the company has to pay at time T or between the interval 0 T, then X of T is actually a compound Poisson process. So we can write X of T as the sum of a random number of random values. And for this, we have the world equations. So we have a formula for the expected value of x of t and the formula for the variance. Okay, so let us compute. Uh, so we have to compute e of x, uh, the expected value of x of 52, because there are 52 weeks in a year, and the standard deviation of x of 52. Now, since z1 is uniform on the interval 50, 10,000, so we know how to compute the mean or the expected value of Z1. This is just 50 plus 10,000 over 2. And the variance is just the difference square over 12, as you know. And this will give a big number, actually about $8 million dollar, dollar squares. Actually, we are not really interested in the variance. The standard deviation is uh, more useful, actually. But we get, we'll get back. So the standard deviation is just... Uh, 9950 9, over radical 12. So, and now the integral actually is just to uh, the integral of 4 from 0 to 52, so just 208. And therefore, if you apply the first equation, we'll get around $1 million. So, this is the expected uh, value of uh, the total claim that the company has to pay. So in total, the company will have to pay about uh, 1 million US dollars. And if we plug in, the, if we apply the second equation, we'll get a standard deviation actually of around uh, $38,000. Uh, okay. So this is easy. Now, in the second question, we assume that there are two. There were two two hundred accidents. So we let x denote the sum of these claims from i equal one to two to hundred. Okay, and now, but this random variable is actually different from x of fifty two. It's not the same thing, and I'll get back to this. So x is a large sum of independent and identically distribu distributed random variables. So we can apply the central limit theorem that you know from second year, which tells us that if n is 200, then x minus n times mu, mu is here uh, the expected value of z1, and sigma is the standard deviation okay, of z1 that we compute. So this uh, quantity is approximately normal, or converges, converges in distribution to do the standard normal uh, random value. Okay. And <clears throat> therefore, we have to compute uh, the probability that x is between uh, a and b, or bigger than c in this case. So we have two ways, actually. The way that you probably learn in second year, which is a little bit old now, is just to subtract n mu 
and divide by sigma radical n. Now, of course, if I divide by n here, I get 1 over nx, which is just the, uh, the empirical mean minus the real mean over sigma over radical n. So it's just the same thing, actually. So, so we subtract n mu and divide by sigma radical n, where mu is about uh, 5,000 and sigma will be actually about 40,000. Okay, and n equal 200. But now, according to uh, the normal approximation, this is uh, the CDF of the standard normal evaluated at uh, this quantity minus the CDF evaluated at this quantity. And then you look at tables. You replace A and the parameters by, the, by their values, and you look at the normal table. Now, we don't need to look at normal tables anymore because we have softwares. So this is why I will present the second way, the more modern way, is if x minus n mu over sigma radical n follows a standard normal, then x will follow approximately a normal, but with large mean, n times mu, and, uh, and standard deviation sigma radical n. Okay? So usually you write sigma square n. Uh, in the mathematical notation, but I use just the standard deviation because uh, in Python or in other softwares, actually, the parameters, the, uh, the standard deviation is, takes, the parameter is the standard deviation and not the variance, which is big. Okay, so, therefore, the probability that X is between A and B is just the CDF of this normal, it's not the standard normal, between B minus A. So, G of B minus G of A. And fortunately, this is, uh, there is a CDF in Python, in SciPy or NumPy as well. So we can write this code. We import SciPy. And the syntax is just, this is the, the CDF of the normal distribution. So it's norm.cdf, evaluated at B. And uh, the mean is just n mu. And the scale is just the standard deviation. Okay. And then if you do that, you will get about a high probability, actually. Okay, because, and this is expected, actually, because uh, we are about 1 million, uh, plus or minus uh, 100,000. And this is approximately three times, three times the standard deviation. But you know from theory that um, most of the values will, will be around, if we have a normal distribution, will be around the mean value plus or minus three sigma. So we get a high probability. And the second probability is just the probability of that X is bigger than C. So of course you can do as uh, in the old way, but it's easy. It's easier actually to uh, do it in the, because we have software, so we don't need tables actually. So, and this is done actually in practicum seven that I encourage you to see. It's very easy now. You can read it on your own. So, and I will end with the remark, why x of 52 and x is not the same random variable? So, those two questions are independent, actually. Because, the, well, first, the expected value of x of 52 is also around 1 million, but it's not the same. So, the exact expected value is $1,045,200. Uh, and the expected value of x, as we know, is just 1,045,000. So not the same expected value. And the standard deviation is more than double the standard deviation of X. Okay. So why they are different? Because X of 52 is the sum of a random number of a random values. So it's a compound random variable. Whereas X is the sum of a fixed or constant number of random values. So as you see here, since the standard deviation is higher in this case, we may say that there are more randomness in X of 52. And this is... Uh, understandable because we don't know how many terms x of 52 contains whereas in x there are just 200 okay and i encourage you to change a little bit the numbers instead of one uh, of 2000 of 200 take 100 or 500 or so just play with the numbers to see what happens actually and of course you can draw graphs. Okay, so this concludes uh, the second exercise and this video as well. So, and chapter three.
which was a little bit short. So thank you for your attention and see you next time.